Health Plus Savings Bank, you can get the protection you need from the bank you trust. The only thing more important than knowing your money is safe is the assurance that your identity has protection. Counts Plus Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. All right, please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which will stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome on a rainy evening. Call the meeting to order and show that all council members are in attendance. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, only to uh, make a request that uh, uh, after the next uh, study session, um, I would propose that we have a uh, executive session with uh, nodal de uh, development in order to uh, discuss the market analysis and, and the progress that they uh, have had with, uh, with leasing. Uh, and I'm requesting that because that the proposed uh, amendment to the urban renewal plan has a significant in increase in both the TIF uh, rebates as well as the city contributions. And I think having, having that sort of information from Nodal would be uh, quite informative and helpful. Which is not an appropriate topic for executive session. I would really have to search that. I'm not familiar with any provision that would allow that. So we could uh, schedule an open meeting, but we can't have an executive well, session. Well, as I, I, as I understood it, they were reluctant to talk about some of their uh, leasing progress in, in public when, when I asked them about that before. So still doesn't, if, if still if wouldn't they, be if, a, an appropriate. If they if they'd be willing to uh, to arrange uh, two on two meetings, possibly something of that nature, just so that we could have an exchange yeah, yeah. of information, we can do that. That's a good idea. We can make that happen. Thank you. All right. Anything else on the consent agenda? Um, all those in favor of approval of the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Um, tonight we have uh, two proclamations, uh, the first being National Historic Preservation Month. <coughs> City of Council Bluffs, Iowa Office of the Mayor proclamation, whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for managing growth, revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability. And whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds, and whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as a people, Therefore, I, Matt Walsh, Mayor of the City of Council Bluffs, does hereby proclaim May 2016 as National Historic Preservation Month in the City of Council Bluffs, Iowa, and urge all citizens of this historic city to join me in supporting the goals of Preservation Month and participating in this special observance uh, with the seal of the City of Council Bluffs, I so do proclaim. And I don't know if anyone's here from Historic Preservation tonight. Yes. Cal? Anything? On behalf of the Historical <coughs> Preservation Commission, I'm Cal Peterson, a member of that commission. I want to thank you for this and that uh, part of our monthly or our annual uh, <coughs> Historical Preservation Month, we award somebody that is done a lot towards preserving history in Council Bluffs and this year that uh, award is going to preserve CB for the work they've done on the Brigant House. So next Wednesday at four o'clock, we are gonna present them with that award and we invite all of you to, to be there with us at the Brigant House at 517 4th Street. At four o'clock next Wednesday. Lots of room in that house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The second proclamation um, is Kids to Parks Day. 
Um, City of Council Bluffs, Iowa Office of the Mayor Proclamation, whereas May 21st, 2016 is the sixth Kids to Park Day organized and launched by the National Park Trust. And whereas Kids to Parks Day empowers kids and encourages family to get outdoors and visit America's parks, and whereas it is important to introduce a new generation to our nation's parks because of the decline in park attendance over the last decades, and whereas we should encourage children to lead a more active lifestyle to combat issues of childhood obesity, diabetes, melatonin hypertension, and hypercholesterolomania. And I'm sure I did not say that right, but um, high levels of cholesterol, I'm sure is what that is. And whereas Kids to Parks Day is open to all children and adults across the country to encourage a large and diverse group of participants and finally, whereas Kids to Parks Days will broaden children's appreciation for nature and outdoors, therefore I, Matt Walsh, Mayor of the City of Council Bluffs, does hereby proclaim May 21st, 2016 as Kids to Park Day in the City of Council Bluffs and encourage residents to take time on May 21st to take children in their, to take the children in their lives to a neighborhood, state, or national park with the seal of the City of Council Bluffs, I do so by proclaim. Is anybody here from Kids to Park? I read where if you were born after 1984, you spent more of your youth indoors than you did outdoors. And, and as the proclamation says, there are detrimental effects to that lifestyle change. So I <coughs> encourage people to get active. All right, those are the proclamations, and we also have two public hearings tonight. Uh, this time, place for a public hearing is advertised in the matter of Resolution 16-109, approving the plan, specifications, form of contract, and cost estimate for the Harmony Street Rehabilitation Project. Um, is proof of publication on file? It is on file. Have any written protests been received? None received. Is there anyone here tonight wishing to talk to the council in regards to this matter? Seeing none, what is the council's pleasure? Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose same sign. This time and place for a public hearing is advertised on the matter of resolution 16-110, granting final plat approval for a two lot residential subdivision to be known as Bethany Lutheran Home Lots one and two is proof of publication on file. It is on file. Have any written protests been received? None received. Is there anyone wishing to speak to the council in regards to this matter? Could you give your name and address for the record, please? Good evening. My name is Matt Hubel uh, with the Shimmer Associates, 1044 North 115th Street in Omaha. I'm here uh, representing the applicant to Bethany Lutheran Home. <coughs> the reason for the plat is a result of a previous application for a uh, planned residential development and a rezone. Um, <clears throat> as a condition of approval of those applications, city staff asked that we basically split the lot instead of having a split zone. <coughs> so that's what we've done here is uh, split the lot right where we showed our rezoning and uh, where the planned residential development uh, would go. So I'd be happy to ask, answer any questions you have or respond to any comments that the public might have. Are there any questions? The so. only comment I would have is to pass along a comment that was given to me regarding the Lutheran Church to your north north, and their access over the bridge, and they wondered if there was any possibility of working out access through your property. So I'll leave it at that. I'll pass that along. Anything else? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, anyone else? In that case, is there a motion from the council? Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Madam Clerk. Ordinance on second consideration. Ordinance 6276, amending Title I, Administration and Personnel, by creating Chapter 1.22, Elimination of residency requirement. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? Uh, go ahead. No, please. I was going to echo what Nate said during the study session, if we could waive third. I think it's important um, 
that we are able to, like the mayor has, it was recently quoted in the paper, that we get the most qualified applicants we can. Mm -hmm. And 90% of the population in the metro area does not live in our community. Uh, and so we ought to avail ourselves of that talent. There are a lot of folks who live in our community, myself included, who uh, make their living outside of our, our town. And a lot of people in our community do that as well. And so we have cross-border traffic. I think on the whole, our community benefits by that quite strongly. And so I, I look forward to uh, seeing this happen and, and I support the <coughs> idea. I would ask that if you do that, since the state law that allows this change uh, is not effective until July 1, that we change the effective date on this ordinance to July 1 of this year. So I would amend my motion to make it effective on July 1 of this year. Second. And can we do it? The second and third all in one fell swoop. The third has to be afterwards. Yeah. And and I'd like to recognize Marianne Hanusa who helped craft this um, law for Iowa so that we we're able to do this. So thank you, Marianne. All right, we are voting on ordinance under second consideration first. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, and then... Motion to waive third. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolutions. Resolution 16-111, authorizing the mayor to execute a letter, letter of intent to enter into a development agreement by and between the City of Council Bluffs and 103 West Broadway, LLC, for the use of urban renewal assistance. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? I, uh, w I appreciate the uh, proposed developer coming and speaking to us in our study session this afternoon. I'm convinced based on the assurances that they will uh, look for the best deal for uh, the project when bidding the project out, uh, particularly because the taxpayer is involved in helping subsidize uh, the project. And I think it's a, an important goal to have projects in our urban core uh, work as opposed to constantly building at the edges only. I think it's important to renew a community from within its existing infrastructure where people have already paid for roads, for water, for sewer, and, and it helps recreate that walkable city that's so important to the future of our community. And uh, with those assurances and the assurances that they believe they'll be able to make the project work under the current uh, various uh, impressive list of, of funds that they're leveraging from different sources, I will support the project. And the, uh, the effective impact of the agreement that was uh, referenced uh, allows for the application for, uh, for state uh, grants that would facilitate this, uh, this development. So that'll be a, a important part of the financing for, for this important project. And, uh, and we wish them well in that application process. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 16-113, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Compass Utility LLC for the South First Street Neighborhood Rehab Project, Phase 7. Motion to approve the resolution. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 16-114, approving change order number 8, adding $52,458.08 to the contract amount for the Industrial Park Levy Improvements Project, Phase 2. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 16-115, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with HDR Engineering Incorporated for engineering services in connection with the levy certification project, drainage MR2. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 16116, authorizing and setting the 2016 annual assessments for Mosquito Creek number 22, seek 
number 32 and West Lewis number 35 for fiscal year 2017. <coughs> motion, <coughs> motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 16-118, making changes to the positions assigned to the Public Health Department. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 16-119, making changes to the positions assigned to the Parks and Recreation Department. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? I just want to say I appreciate uh, the mayor and his administration uh, making the difficult choices of on this resolution and the previous, the most previous one just before this vote. Um, it, it is cutting a couple of positions. Uh, it's to help stay within the budget. It's never, of course, a pleasant thing to, to, uh, to lose positions uh, in a person's uh, position with the city. But at the same time, we we're tasked with the job of, of looking out for the best interest and use of the taxpayer money. And I, and I support these cost-saving moves and commend the mayor for making the difficult choices. Thank you. It, it, it is difficult because these are good employees that have worked for the city for many years. So anything else? Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Applications for permits and cancellations, 8A through C. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, citizens request to be heard. None received. Um, anyone wishing to address the council? Chris Kelly, 864 McKenzie <coughs> Avenue. A little bit different. The last four or five months, you guys had to make some really hard decisions. Yes, I've been growly, grumbly, and growled at you and everything else, but I always, afterwards, that's the end of it. And I, I hope you guys understand that. I've got it. The mayor and I have had words. Nate, all of us have had words most of us about some of the projects it's our money and you I hope that you and I looks like you guys are hand, doing a pretty good job of handling it and I am a still fond deal about the police department and I'm glad that passed I know we're worried about where to put it and I want to make one thing clear and that the people don't understand it isn't Heartland property that owns that property. It's Hart, the family, the family group, and that money they will use to put back into our community, like the mayor just said once before. And I like you guys to remember that. And still want the bike trail. You know where. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor Walton, City Council. My name is Joel Driver, 10505 South Sur Street, Part 113. Help everybody gets to go to Pride Week. It is very, it's a blast, and I think everybody should attend if they can. Yeah. Thank you. It, uh, I was going to say something at the end of the meeting, but it starts next Friday night uh, um, down at the uh, Stir Concert Cove with uh, uh, announcement of the city's new branding campaign and then works its way through the following weekend. So. And our uh, peer connection might be in it this year. Really? Hopefully. Super. Thank you for coming. You're Becky? Uh, yep, motion. Do we need, can motion we get a motion to receive? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Hurry before she hands it out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was supposed to be answering. No, you're fine. Thank you. There's a lot of procedure. Thanks. All right. Uh, 
my name is Sarah Peterson, 2518 Avenue D here in Council Bluffs. Um, I've given you guys some packets. I want to apologize. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not oh, a public fine. speaker, so I'm completely relax, nervous. So. <laughs> um, I just want to, what I'm here for tonight is I have um, in my home as a family pet, as an emotional, emotional support animal for my son, um, a Juliana pig. Um, he's a smaller breed than like a pot belly pig. Uh, nonetheless, that's what I'm here for. Some of the um, ordinances that we, that I've looked through, um, he's not, he's deemed a dangerous animal in our city. Um, and I was trying to hope that maybe you guys would deem worthy that maybe we could update things or revisit things. I'm sorry. You're okay. <laughs> um, it's okay, we'll get up. <coughs> And I also want to ask that while we're working maybe to reach a resolution that I can keep him in my home as not to cause any further emotional stress to my son. Um, oh, my <laughs> right, sorry. <laughs> um, in the packets that I have there in front of you is some of the information that I've gathered. Um, right there on the front is a letter from my son's doctor at Boys Town. Um, on top of Dr. Sawyer, he sees another um, doctor that uh, monthly. Um, and that was the letter from her. She... Underneath that is the, um, the a letter from the breeder from the veterinarian that I got him from in Kansas. Um, what that says is because she knew that when I was looking for um, an animal that would bond specifically close with the family, um, since we had have had so many, we had um, like six deaths in a two year time to include my son's father. Um, shortly, with all that happening, we were suggested to get an animal um, to bond so that he would have some additional support. And we had a dog um, that we had for quite a few years and last year <laughs> there was a car accident and she passed away. So when I was in the search for, the, his doctor suggested that we move forward with finding something else, um, another animal that specifically would bond, you know, closely. Um, when I started looking for animals, I was looking for something specifically that bonded and probably surprised, I was as surprised then as you guys may be to see that I'm here for a pig. Um, this, the letter, second letter there was specifically, um, the breeder picked his specific pig because of its calm demeanor. Um, and just the, the the bond that they form. They form a bond with a particular family member. You know, they bond with the whole family, but they form a, you know, a strong bond with one. The second letter there, I was trying to reach out, and for the third one was trying to reach out to some of the um, local places um, just to prove or to have some kind of support <coughs> um, <coughs> that the mini pigs or the smaller breed pigs haven't, um, you know, proven to be uh, like overrunning the ERs with bites and attacks on people. Um, so Mr. Schmidt, the emergency services director at Jenny, offered to let me quote him. Um, the next one there is from Mark Langan. He's the vice president at the Nebraska Humane Society. Um, we spoke for quite a while. Um, he said that he would love to have come advocated for us, but um, Due to his contract with Omaha, he didn't think that it would be okay for him to come across the river. Um, and, you know, that just says that right now he has 30 licensed pigs. Um, the smaller breeds in Omaha has not had one complaint with the sanitation, noise, pig bites, anything like that. Um, the next one there, um, I actually called Glenwood to see what their ordinances were. <coughs> Uh, because there's, uh, their ordinances aren't online. And the captain said, um, he said, well, if you're quoting, he said, why don't you take with you the quotes <coughs> that I have here? 
He said that never in his 22 years of being the captain, his, he or any of his officers ever responded to a pig attack or pig bites. Um, on Mark Langens, he also um, said that it may be worth mentioning that Bellevue just recently has changed their ordinances to include many pigs as domesticated pets like the cat or the dog. Um, the, third, the next one that I have there is the letter that how all this came about. Uh, I received a letter in, the, in my door saying that I was harboring a pig. I called right away because I did not know I was doing wrong. Um, so that was the, that's the letter that, that they had. Uh, each of the two next letters are from my direct neighbors to my east and west, um, saying just extra support that he hasn't been a nuisance. He's never been seen running outside the yard. He doesn't make you know, excessive noise. There's no odor from our, our yard. Um, in the pictures that I passed out there, in the, there's a few of them in the back that have, that show our backyard that have a six foot privacy fence that surrounds it. <coughs> um, the next one there that has the pictures of the pigs on it, that um, it says medical records, those are the vac vaccines he was given um, from the veterinary clinic and also the record that he was neutered I had no intentions on breeding him. The next one that says the Julianne Pig Association Registry, what that basically um, is is like an AKC stamp for a dog saying that they can be registered. Um, and it has his lineage, which is also on the, the previous paper. Uh, to be able to be JPAR regist registered, they have to prove lineage several, several back so that they can you know, account for the size, the breed. I never did register. I have the information from the vet. I never did register him, JPAR, because I had no intentions on breeding him. But I just had the paper so that you could see that he is actual a Juliana pig with his license number. Um, the next one there is the agreement when I purchased him to show that I've had him since um, August 12th of last year. So, um, <coughs> What I want to say, um, he, so I was, when I called, I had, there was several conversations with Mr. Um, Mr. Barrett, and then I also spoke with Mr. Dirks, um, and I understand their point where a law is a law. I did, when I, before I went to get this pig, I did call the Humane Society or the Midland Shelter, and I, I spoke with someone who, um, I asked if there was rules against having the small breed pigs in city limits, and I was told that there are no rules. Um, I'm, I wasn't, that's why I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm not trying to be deceitful. I'm just trying, this is where we're at now. Um, so with that, speaking to Mr. Dirks and um, Mr. Barrett, um, I'm, you know, I, I understand their position on it. I understand that you know, they told, well, I was told that rules are rules and I needed to just get rid of him. Um, so I'm just moving past that. I'm here now. Um, like I said, we went to Kansas. We specifically picked out, the breeder had picked out that pig because of its demeanor. It was gentle. Um, I don't even <laughs> Some of the some of the things that I wanted to point out specifically about about the pigs, um, just differently than a dog, they're they're very intelligent. Ours does puzzle boards. He'll move pieces around to find treats. Um, you know, he's potty trained. He goes to the door. He barks like he barks when he has to go outside to use the restroom. He does have a litter box in the house that if you know someone doesn't get to the door quick enough, he'll use the litter box. Uh, He's never been, he's never ever been loose. I mean, he wears a harness. Um, we even, I mean, I believed that we were being doing the responsible thing. He has tags on with our phone number, our address, just in case. Um, you know, I, 
I've learned how to trim his hooves. <laughs> he does not have tusks. They were clipped off as a baby. Um, you know, and he, the same way with a, with a dog, he would go to the vet. He gets, you know, physicals, things like that, gets updated vaccinations. Um, I wanted to point out that um, our sister city of Omaha, um, just that they have, they do with their guidelines, they say that any, the mini pigs will not be greater than 100 pounds. Um, our, ours is 45 pounds, and I have been told by the vet that he's probably pretty much where he's going to be. Um, I already told you that he's potty trained. Um, easier, in a sense, to clean up than a dog. He won't use the two same spots to urinate or to, to defecate. He, two same spots always, solid waste. It's easy to scoop up, don't have to hunt for anything. Um, <coughs> he does tricks. <coughs> he knows how to sit. He lifts his hoof. He shakes. He spins. He gives kisses. <laughs> um, he goes to the kennel to sleep at night. He knows when it's dinner time. He goes to the kennel. He doesn't beg for food. Um, he's not outdoors at our house ever alone because, well, on the other side of our fence, there's dogs that bark, and I'm always afraid that those dogs may get him. Um, so he's never outside alone. Um, we'll move past this. <laughs> Um, do you, yeah, that, do you guys have any questions for me? I'd be glad to answer anything any that I know of. <clears throat> so I'd like to look at, you said Omaha and Bellevue obviously both allow this now under just a regular pet permit? Yes. Um, I think she highlighted that. Exactly. Both, okay, yeah. both of the ordinance are in there for Bellevue and Omaha, and they're listed as domesticated and... It's not a pot belly pig though, right? But no. it's like similar, He's, smaller? He's smaller than a pot belly pig. Okay. My pop, recollection was when we did this that there was, for whatever reason, there was a movie out or something that people were very interested in pot belly pigs who grew up to be very large. Right, pigs. right. And so it was causing neighborhood problems. And that's why I spent so, so much time finding a reputable breeder that had the lineage and had parents on site so that I would have something to go off other than Craigslist, someone telling me I was buying a small pig and then I end up with the farm hog. Yeah. Um, and the, like the pot belly pigs, the, like a healthy weight for a pot belly pig can be 200 pounds. I'm not in the market <coughs> for a 200 pound pig at all. He's, I mean, you know, I was looking for something, like I said, smart, bond, clean. He's, you know, they don't shed, so, you know, that's a plus hypoallergenic. So, any, any other questions that I can answer? Any, I mean, I'm more than willing to find an answer, look for an answer. I just, I, my, my son Wyatt is here, which I questioned whether or not I should even bring him tonight, because I don't, he insisted on being here. You know, but I, I would like to, like I asked if maybe we could revisit the wording, change some wording. Um, I'm willing to fill out permits, inspections, pay fees, whatever it is. My understanding of the current status is that the animal control has identified it as a non-eligible family pet, and so you have made arrangements <coughs> you hope that you don't have to fulfill by taking the pig out of town to somewhere else um, in that was, I think, maybe seven days from now. It's supposed to be done. I've talked May 12th. May 12th. the 12th. And so I've talked to the, uh, so in three days, I've talked to Animal, con to Don Dirks, really, and he said that <coughs> he can extend that time frame if, he said, I'll do it a week. I said, that really probably doesn't accomplish anything because the council would need to take some action. And he said he could accommodate that if, if there is a desire. So thanks for your input. You know, let them think about it. And in the meantime, uh, you're fine with keeping the
the pig and we'll get back to you and let you know okay. um, it it may very well be 10 days or so before we get back but okay I appreciate Matt I'm sorry you know me but I thought I better I was the she's gonna tag me in if she couldn't finish <laughs> and you did a very good job I'm Rebecca belt 600 Oakland Drive I just want to clarify so is that she doesn't have to worry that they're going to knock on the door May 12th. Will they're we? not. They won't be knocking on the they door won't May 12th. Knock on the door May 12th, yeah. and then okay. Yeah. So can we have? They any? won't. And then if we get, if we, if the decision doesn't go your way, we'll give you probably the same amount of time they gave you last time to make those arrangements. So, so it isn't a deal where they're going to. Completely appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like we were saying, it's like sending your kids off to. Flow an hour away and saying, "Just stay here till mommy comes back to get you." Yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. And he would have required maybe more vaccines to go somewhere else, yeah. which she was willing to do. But you don't want to put your kids through that either. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So are we going to get like some feedback from Don in that, and maybe or? Well, I gave step? you the information. I'm. I, I guess you know I'm not necessarily yeah. giving you advice on how to proceed, Good but right you know. I, if you could feel like you've got the votes to to bring it up, well, somebody I, could do that. But I'd like some interpretation, possibly by by Mr. Wade, because to to look at the at the ordinance, uh, th there appears to be some level of of discretion or assessment built into this process, because the the ordinance makes reference, you know, to farm farm type animals being bred for a specific purpose in a specific zone a and residentials or in a specific zoning which is not residential and in this particular circumstance where where she has documentation uh, about the animal about its uh, purpose the the limitations uh, set on it um, I'm just kind of interested to see if, if there is potentially some sort of in, in, uh, discretion on this to the extent that there's still city oversight and, and review on this, but g given the, 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 the medical or mental health Im implications of this, I'd like to be sensitive to that if possible. Sure. Right now, our, we are code tax in two different ways. They one classify them as a farm animal which means they can't be they can't be kept within 25 feet of any dwelling, even if it's the owners, or 150 foot of their neighbors, uh, which can be waived, uh, but it still doesn't get them by the 25 foot buffer. And then we also classify them as dangerous, specifically all morning. So it would take a couple of fairly major changes to our existing code. Uh, the, the trouble with the pot belly pig was that it can get big. And people thought they were getting these miniature things, and they turned into bugs, large animals. And I looked up Juliana pigs, and they have certain characteristics. And I suppose if you tie it to the lineage and actually have some proof before the animal could be registered or something, like that, there might be a way of getting there. But, uh, yeah, I, I can definitely see the difficulties of just opening it up, carte blanche. Yeah. But you know, in, in this particular case, it seems like particular care has been taken that can be documented so it would be nice if there was a, a little bit more di discretion based upon uh, well, me medical if reasons. If you're going to go down that road I think you need to also consider quantity, mm -hmm. breeding, I mean, those types of things you're going to, are you going to have, we, if you're a breeder in Council Bluffs you can have six animals and you want six pigs in next door to your houses. Right. Well, we've had a similar request recently based on it being I a thought. therapy animal right. um, for a different <coughs> type of animal. And so then, you know, the problem becomes, well, how, where, where is the, the did, line? I mean, did it, we ever it's, see a, a just letter from a doctor on oh, the other animal? On service animals. Just a claim. Yeah, never a letter. Have some yeah. special training. The animal be have some special training. Uh, specifically, it says just a family pet doesn't cut it. Uh, right. Is and it, could the pig be? Is there, is there have training? Special training. The, like service well, dogs can go on a plane. The, 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 
would require somebody to back up that tree. Well, that and not every, as I understand it, not every animal that can be a service animal necessary, uh, local jurisdiction is not necessarily precluded from limiting certain types of animals, with perhaps the exception of service dogs. But that's just my memory. I, you know, I was. I would like to ask the owner just real quick if there is any special training um, that would certify the pig as being like they do with a dogs. service animal. and ponies commonly recognized in Council Bluff as service animals. Um, I was actually quoted that. Um, I don't know that have any service animal training. I mean, I'm sure they could. They, they're the, you know, they're listed as the fourth smartest animal out of all of the breeds, so I'm sure that they could, but I, I just don't know. I just didn't know since, you know, the information is, mm -hmm. is that... Well, this breed, you know, is tame and was specifically selected. I just didn't know if maybe there was a little more information that we could. We we would have to change. I've been doing just a little bit of, I guess, pig research. Um, we were talking because I was curious because I'm. This is not a, a subject on which I'm an expert, um, despite my extended family, uh, many of them being farmers. I I know very little about animals outside of say cats and perhaps dogs to be honest but I was looking to see because I was fairly certain sometimes the name of something can be misleading uh, like for example a guinea pig is actually a type of rodent not a pig and it's not even from guinea um, but uh, as I've discovered uh, but I was looking to see if, if this sort of if this animal was even came under uh, pig as as scientifically understood and as written in our ordinance, just to make certain that, first of all, the, the, the law even applied here before we argue about whether we should change it. There's, there's different, um, what do I want to say, genus names or family names? Yeah. Um, or like the Suscropa is the generic name that covers all swine, all four swine. Yep, um, and I can confirm that. I just saw that. And that's how our ordinance is written currently. So it would cover all swine. And, and I checked. The Juliana is a particular type of a breed uh, that is of the of the, the genus Suscrofa scrofa. So it would fall as I believe as the ordinance is written, it it would fall under it. So so for you to know and my colleagues, I believe um, the law would have to Apply. change. It, it it would have to change to allow. I was looking to see if there was maybe an exception, just well, like the guinea pig's not well, a pig, but but it isn't. But I. It looks like it would be banned, so I would agree with the way it's written. I would agree with uh, animal control. What about, like, I know some people have chickens. What about a farm permit, some type of in-town? You know what I mean? You know a fair amount about the for, chicken. Yeah, is it not? Because you're not using it for, like, a farm. Is that why that would not work, Dick? I was wondering that, too, if they could do the farm permit where you get, you know, the neighbors to sign off and get to have... Plan or is it different because it's you not? You can't have roosters, right? Is that they can't, under a farm permit, uh, oh, because they're not in the residence. Where they can't be within 25 that, foot. Yeah, that makes any, sense. Well, I never thought about that. Even you the, can't be in that. Yeah, that makes sense. So we, it's, we have, it's kind of being hit from a couple different sides here, both as a dangerous animal and, a, and as farm animal. You yeah. Have layers of You'd have to keep it outside if, yeah, if you're going to keep it as a. Would, uh, and as I understand with chickens, roosters are not allowed. Is that. Correct. And I the, wonder if... Because um, I noticed in this, again, just what I can find on Google, uh, that the, the Juliana pig, apparently the male versions, uh, the, the male gender, rather, of, of, of this, this type of animal are tend to be more solitary and more territorial than the female. So perhaps it's similar yeah. concerns compared to oh. chickens. Do I you don't think know. that they would know at Boys Town if you could get some sort of service animal... You know, because you got this letter from the doctor. Uh, Could you maybe check on that? If the psychiatrist said due to legal reasons for Boys Town, they refer you back to the pediatrician. Mm -hmm. So although we see her sometimes twice a month, because the pediatrician referred us, they have to refer us back to the pediatrician. Letter. Part of the... Like, you, oh, go ahead, like, I'm sorry. Yeah, what I was trying to think is if there was someone that you knew of that could see if there is a way, like they had mentioned earlier, to get it actually certified as a... Companion, you know, as a 
Like a dog can. Who, what else did we say it could? Um, you said ponies and dogs right now, but. Right. Service animal. Yeah, a service animal if it could actually be an official, you he, know. He can be registered as an emotional support animal, mm -hmm. an emotional service animal. He, it would be, I mean, they, the, that costs thousands of dollars. That's so, true. I mean, I guess he could probably <coughs> be sent away and I. Just like the, the same kind of training, I'm sure. Right. It would have to go through the training, like the fire department dog. Right. That yeah, that was right. It was he very expensive. So. Yeah. Really expensive. Yeah. It, and, and part of the difficulty we have is we're forced. We have the job of coming up with the rules that apply to everybody, and so the, the difficult part is is honestly coming up with rules that apply in the vast majority of cases, and there will always be exceptions. Like for example, the lady who wanted to have a particular kind of uh, Snake, python, a uh, ball oh. python, I think it was. <coughs> um, <coughs> thank you. Uh, and and I have no doubt in her case she was exemplary in taking care of this animal. But then we had to look to the general rule of would it be a good idea to have any type of python within city limits close to people as opposed to being you know out in the country where you you might not be 20 or 50 feet from your neighbor. Um, so, so as we make our decision, that's just in general, but on an issue like this particularly, we have to weigh the general rule that is what, if, if we make an exception here, like the mayor was uh, alluding to, we'll have to come up with all the rules of the game, so to speak. Plus it would open it up to everybody who could, who could meet those rules. We could try to tailor those rules, you know, to make them as reasonable as possible, but it can get really technical and to the point where then you really can't have the animal. So then it becomes a bit of a game, and we don't want to do that. I don't know. I don't want to, I didn't intend for it to get this. No, no. The law, laws are, are a commend you because it's tough to speak in public, especially about something you're really personal and, you know, passionate about. Uh, the tough part is just so you kind of understand where, where we kind of have to come from, we have to look at things that way. So it's however we come out on it, it's it's not personal, and we, we just have to weigh a lot of things. And there, there's no 100% perfect answer in anything we do. Okay. You know, that's the tough part. We have to weigh a lot of different factors. But, you know, I would be curious to see if, if there is something in the law, law about that, and, and I don't Maybe I'm not just dead set against changing anything ever just because, but I tend towards not, my speaking for myself, I tend towards not changing the list unless, unless circumstances have changed, like society as a whole, we've decided something wasn't what we thought it was before, or, or things sometimes just change over time, you know? Because I don't, I don't want to get in a situation where every year the list is in flux. So this year I can have the animal, next year I can't. So I, that settled, these are allowed, these aren't. I'd like that to slowly change over time. But maybe this is an example. I think we just need more information. But you know, without it, I'd have to say, my, just speaking for myself, my gut reaction is not to change it unless given a really strong reason to do so. So I'd need more information to change my mind, to be honest. Is that something that I can help with, or is that something that you face? Well, that's something that I'm sure we I could would, if you. Could you could give maybe some. your phone number to the city clerk in case they do need to get a hold of you and get a question answered or something. That would and any more yeah. information that you find that you want us to see, just, I'm just email us or get it to Marcy and she can get it to us. Because I'm not, frankly, very familiar at all with any type of, of pig as, as a pet or even as an emotional support answer. I'll admit my ignorance on the topic. Uh, help educate me to try to get my vote on it. Absolutely. That's, okay. I just don't want the lack of the lack of knowledge, so if there's something that I can do to help. Um, Absolutely. You know, people, when they think about the pig, they're thinking of a 1,200-pound farm hog that's dirty with loose stools and flies and mud all over the place, and that's really like a, he's like the size, they're comparable to the size of a beagle, but they're mm -hmm. just dense, you know? Mm-hmm. Dense. Yeah, I don't know. I thought about asking there. if we could bring him, but we didn't. <laughs> 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 Only yeah. service They're animals. Not, yeah, See, they're there's they're the catch-22. They're very popular in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not bad. asking to take him grocery shopping or two. <laughs> they don't have a lot of rules there. <laughs> no, anyway. there's no rules. But I have no, they really don't business. have a lot of rules there. there really I can get meat on a right. stick. Right. Thank you. We'll, think, be, we'll thank be in you. touch. I was just going to say, I think, Nate, for, for your information, I think yes, part of why she brought the ordinance from Bellevue and Omaha. No, that's helpful. They're definitely a precedent, and they're 
much bigger. Oh, that's true. In part, just so you understand, though, we tend to err on the side of 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 not permitting more things than they do for whatever reason. Different places. Just so you know, for Would it example, be helpful if we try to investigate what led them, how long they've had. Pigs yeah, added like like if they banned it and why they changed it and why they added them and where they got their information. Maybe maybe, there, maybe their humane society she, might be a good place to to, to ask the history. Is, is it in the? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'll I'll be sure to read this, but Mark Langan is the vice president of Nebraska, the field operations for Nebraska Humane Society. Okay, it might be. Said that he would like to come advocate, but might be interesting uh, to know too uh, what the what the record has been since they changed those uh, ordinances, if they've experienced problems or they've had complaints. There's or, also a couple testimonials in your yeah, packet on right. that issue Appreciate as well. It. Right, and he, the, all the people that yeah, we'll take a look at. I offered the information um, from, they said, please, if anybody had any questions, please call them. So, I mean, their direct quotes, the words were changed. <coughs> Feel free. All right. Thanks thank again. You. Thank you. No, thank you, ma'am. Sure, of course. Anyone else? Anyone from the council? Just uh, someone dropped a article by today that uh, and told me that in the May issue of American Legion magazine, Rainbow Post Number Two in Council Bluffs, Iowa, got recognized. It was chartered in 1920, named after the 42nd Infantry Division, which was dubbed the Rainbow Division during World War II. Um, because the uh, members of that unit came from 26 states in the District of Columbia. So um, Council Bluffs was the second American Legion post certified in Iowa. That's the right term. And um, congratulations for being in the May issue of American Legion magazine. All right, we are adjourned. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council Plus Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be.